Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Glad you could join me here today. We are getting into our second show of the weekend for our Cabral host calls. We answered so many great questions yesterday. Thanks so much for returning here today. Always appreciate you tuning in. All of your reviews of the show uh, and your shares, of course, mean the world to me. That is what it's all about here uh, with the Cabral concept. and Everything that we do uh, over at stephencabral.com is trying to just share with people the absolute best way to get started on your healing journey for anything wellness-based, uh, weight-based, anti-aging-based, and also overall mental health as well. I think it's so important. I think it's so overlooked. We want to work on both the mind and the body. All right, let's check out what questions have come in for the day. Before I end up you know, answering a question, I might as well put the disclaimer out there. Uh, just like pretty much any natural health-based uh, podcast or article in the world, we're not here to provide you with any medical-based advice, medical treat plans, medical cures, or medical diagnosis. Now, let's talk freely. All right, <laughs> let's freeze with Kian, I guess, right? All right, so first question is from Courtney. Courtney says, let's see, hi there. One of my closest friends had a pretty immediate strong reaction to the Johnson & Johnson shall not be named virus. Oh, and then we have to use the word V, of course. Okay. Um, he sweats profusely as, he, as if he'd have a bu dumped a bucket of water over his head. Since the V, he has vitiligo that has kicked in, which he has no history of, and he continues to lose pigmentation on his face and arms, so basically um, lighter pigmentation spots all over the body. Uh, any advice for how to intervene? Thanks so much from a long-time patient of your practice. All right, Courtney, thanks so much. Uh, for asking your question. I answered a similar question yesterday. So um, interesting, we get a lot of these questions and my highest recommendation is to immediately get the body back into balance and in this case, the immune system. So it's like, okay, yeah, of course, right? But easier said than done. So the best place is always the big five labs, run them with your naturopathic doctor, integrative health practitioner level two, or our practice at Ecolife up to you. If you can't run them all, totally understand. Try to run the starter kit, right? So it's a quarter of the price. Um, that's a good place to start. And then if you're not able to, okay, well, what do we do? Are you doing the daily foundational protocol level two? Are you using sauna or infrared sauna like the Thera60 that we have on the resources page? All my resources are at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. Are, are you doing, um, getting enough sleep, eight to nine hours of sleep at night? We have to rebalance the immune system since it just underwent an assault. I mean, that's, that's the truth, right? Again, like I'm not here to tell you what to do with your overall life and what you subscribe to and don't subscribe to. That's not my job. My job is to present both sides of the argument and help people that have been injured and hurt. Like that's my job. And so, and I take it very seriously. I take it seriously in that I want to give you the best advice I can, but never tell you what to do with your own life. That's, I believe people should have the freedom to be able to decide what they want to do with their own life. And you get to choose, right? Hopefully like that's a choice that you have as a human. So um, what we need to do though is again, this is, it changes the immune system on purpose, like that's the goal, and it did not work out in this particular case. So what we need to do is balance that immune system and specifically inflammation. Have uh, your, has your friend read the book, The Rain Barrel Effect, right? It's free on my website now, you just pay shipping. Have they, are they doing anything natural health based? Diet, anti-inflammatory diet, not over exercising, but exercise. And they do in stress reduction. They do in toxin removal. Have they ever done a functional medicine detox? It's like there's so much to do, but you just start with the foundation. You start with the basics. So if they haven't even, if they don't even know about natural health, it's like, well, you know, we have to get them to learning that part, right? So I don't know where they are in their journey, but certainly um, listen to the podcast, read the book, the rain barrel effect, do a 21 day functional medicine detox, like start the process. That's what I recommend. All right. And then of course, the uh, daily foundation protocol and immunity protocol. But again, for someone that's never done anything, that'll be a lot. So, okay, what can we do? Whatever they're willing to do. Like, that's it. Like, start with, the, with what they're willing to do. All right, Anonymous is up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Thank you for your help. I listen to you every day and I've learned so much. Thank you, Anonymous. Appreciate that. I have a uh, septoplasty. I, or I had a septoplasty done a few years back. And about four months after I started getting a glue-like mucus in my nose and down my throat, it's so thick that sometimes I can't get it out of my throat unless I gargle water and forcefully hack it up. 
Uh, it is there pretty much 24 seven, but sometimes worse than the AM, it will wake me up. It almost feels like I'm drowning. I've done your 21 day detox, CBO and CBO finisher. I'm waiting on my food sensitivity test results. I've tried two to three drops of GSE in the sinus rinse, but it burned really bad. Is it normal for the GSE? The um, ear, nose and throat doctor keeps telling me that everything looks fine. And I've asked a reflux, but I feel fine. I feel it in my nose too. Okay. Yeah. What, what can happen is, and again, I, I'm not giving you medical advice or a diagnosis, but when you have septoplasty, there, you've, you get an injury to the inside of your nasal passages, right? Like that's of the septum, right? Like it's totally normal. And this is part of the procedure. And so you can still have inflammation there. Um, it was a four months ago. It sounds like there is still inflammation. That inflammation creates mucus that's totally normal. Whenever you get any type of inflammatory response to whether it's virus, bacteria in your nose or injury, uh, you build up mucus. Like that's, that's what the body's supposed to do, right? It brings immunoglobulins, white blood cells to the area. So uh, again, I, I, if you got a all clear from your ENT, your ear, nose and throat doctor, great. Um, if it were me, I can only tell you what it would be if I were me. I would be doing uh, two to three squirts in each nostril of the Nutribiotic spray, morning and night. I would also be doing the neti pot. Um, but you know, if you're putting two to three drops of the GSE and it burns, just make sure you put in a little bit of the saline as well. You can buy the Neil Med pre-packaged saline, or you can just use a little Himalayan sea salt, just a pinch. Uh, and then add just one drop to start of the GSE. And I'd be doing that once or twice a day. I would clean out anything that's in those nasal passages. That's what I would do for sure. Um, because it, it very well could be local and have nothing to do with your gut or anything else. Okay? So that's what that's what I would do. Jenny's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Thank you for all that you do. I have a question about the binder Entera, Enteros, so Enteros gel. Enteros gel. I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, read that it helps bind histamines as well as aluminum, et cetera. Have you heard of this product and what are your thoughts? I know you have done podcasts on binders before and I've used Quicksilver product with a charcoal and zeolite. I'm not sure that that's the right binder for me because I deal with histamine intolerance. Uh, is there a better binder for someone with histamine issues? Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let me just type this in. I never do this because it really, like, the show could turn into a disaster if I'm looking up things on Google at the same time, but I'm going to do it for you. And uh, Enteros Gel, again, I don't even, I don't know this product. Uh, it says it's an oral intestinal absorbent based on organic mineral with absorption capacity for harmful toxins. What is it made out of? It's made out of polymethylsiloxane, polyhydrate. Okay. And purified water. Well, let's do one more. It just looks like it is a gel that binds up whatever's in the intestines. That is what it looks like. And it looks like there's some research behind it. What I would be worried about is long-term use of this product. To me, it looks like a product you would use for short-term use for potential medical-based issues, maybe a, a known bacterial issue uh, might, be, might be what it might be used for. I like going more of the natural health route. route. Um, I know what you're saying. If you're looking to use a binder, some of them can be higher histamine. I agree. The Quicksilver is a little bit lower histamine, which is nice. So... Um, you always have to do, of course, what you feel is best. In a general, I typically recommend people are getting 30 to 35 grams of fiber per day in their diet, mainly from vegetables and some fruit. They're getting enough hydration to keep the bowels moving. So that's typically what we do, whole food. But um, but I do like a binder, you know, for sure. So you just use the amount that may not overflow your rain barrel in terms of histamines. I don't know enough about this product, honestly, to give you a yay or a nay on it. Something that isn't as natural, I'm just a little bit more cautious of. So that's that. Now, one exciting thing I can kind of share with you is in January, we have a low histamine, the lowest you can get really, histamine binder coming out. Um, and that is for people like myself that need low histamine uh, and many of the uh, TH2 dominant people out there with you know, allergies or asthma or gut issues, skin rashes, et cetera. So um, sorry, I did my best. 
uh, and that that hopefully at least gave you a little bit of an inkling as to what I would do myself. All right, Mary's up next. My husband has been diagnosed with MRSA. He went to an infectious disease doctor after a dermatologist suggested he be on an antibiotic for the rest of his life. The infectious disease doctor gave him uh, Bactrin, I think it's Bactrin, uh, for flares, but he also said I probably already have it because he has it. Asked if there's anything we could do to permanently get rid of it, and he said no. Wondering if there's a lab I could run or supplements I could take. Okay, so again, you know how I feel about antibiotics life-saving conditions only. When you need it, you need it. But, you know, antibiotic for life, talk about the destruction of your gut and immune system, right? I mean, that is like, you know, when you only have a hammer, everything in life looks like a nail. I mean, that's basically it. Now, I get it. MERS is a staph-based infection, right? I mean, it's not good. I'm not saying that. And so I don't want to overlook this. I'm not saying not to listen to your medical doctor. You should. But, um... Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus uh, aureus is uh, its a superbug. And now you're using antibiotics to try to kill it or keep it at bay. But guess what? Antibiotics kill, may create more superbugs. So this is what I do. If this was a family member of mine, um, even if you didn't run the big five, totally fine with that. I would make sure that my gut is impeccable and balanced. If I only ran one lab, it would be the bacteria and parasite stool test. If I ran two, it would be the candida metabolic and vitamins test on top of that. And then if there was a third, I'd probably run the, you know, the, the food sensitivity test. But really the first two are the most important and the first one is the most important. So for sure, I'd be balancing my gut as needed. I would try to wean off. That's just me not giving you medical advice and be using things like the immunity protocol plus the daily foundational protocol. That's what I would do. I mean, it is what I do um, like every day of my life. So, so I, I hope that that's uh, inching you in the right direction, okay? Because a healthy body, right? A healthy body, I think, uh, can be healthy. I, I truly believe that. I don't know that we need to rely on these antibiotics for life. Okay, Kevin's up next. Will you do a podcast with your thoughts on the Wim Hof method? Specifically, his... 30 deep breath exercise in cold water therapy. I love your show and trust your research and insight. Thank you. I've actually done a show on the Wim Hof method many, many years ago. Uh, many years ago, I've talked about that. It's just like not as trendy right now. Um, and so I just haven't been talking about it as much, but I, I'm always happy to answer your questions. Let's just see if we can find it. Let's go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. And let's go to the search box. Let's just type in Wim Hof. We don't need method because it'll pull up more shows. Let's see what we find. Hmm, you're right, it didn't show up, but it should, because I talked about Wim Hof many, many times. What if we just look up Wim? Neuron, uh, something, vitamin D, stability, weakening. You know what? I know that I've talked about it. So what I would do is I would ask at cabralsupportgroup.com which podcast I talked about about Wim Hof. And then let me give you just a little synopsis right now. So I think Wim Hof is fantastic. Wim Hof's method is actually based off of uh, monks that have been doing this for thousands of years. They would literally go out in the snow. This is where it was learned. And they would demonstrate their ability to control their own temperature by melting the snow around them. And it's a, it was a, it's a pretty impressive feat. So Wim Hof is a pretty impressive guy. Now the problem is that this stimulates norepinephrine. It stimulates adrenaline, and it can burn you out. So again, who is it best for? Well, who needs their sympathetic nervous system stimulated? People with um, lower mood depression can be phenomenal. People who are more of the kapha body type, a little slower to get going. People maybe with... Um, Again, the more endomorphic body type. But of, should a vata body type that's already sympathetic nervous system dominant, that already has anxiety, that already um, runs off of adrenaline norepinephrine, should they do more of this? No. I mean, that's, that's the truth, right? There is no one for all. Should that person even be doing cold therapy? I talked about it earlier in the week. They should be doing more heat-based therapy. 
calming the sympathetic nervous system, relaxing the heart rate, not stimulating it. So again, there's just no all for one. So I think Wim Hof Method is fantastic. And it's just for the people that I named and they can get great benefit from it. All right, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, but again, because it's not talked about, when you can learn how to then use that breath work to then calm your body to get into cold water, then even better. But that's not just not talked about enough. And so I can't just recommend it because um, it needs to be well thought out. But once people control their breath and then they can actually control the stress response, the problem is like it's, I think it needs to be just nuanced a bit more. That's all, okay? All right, Mike's up next. Hi, Dr. C. Can you explain the difference between grape seed extract and grapefruit seed extract? The different benefits of each dosage, liquids versus pill. I cannot thank you enough for everything you've done to help me over the years. You are the man. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. Uh, sure, happy to explain. And because it is kind of confusing, like grape seed extract versus grape, grapefruit seed extract. If you say them first, they sound like the same thing. But um, let's get rid of the word extract. So we've got grape seed. All right, those are seeds that are literally coming from grapes, typically red or dark purple grapes, and they are crushed for that oil then extract, all right? Now, grapefruit seeds are seeds that come from grapefruits, not grapes, and they're citrus-based, which, uh, and again, the same thing, they are crushed and you get the oil. All right, so this is the easiest way to think about it. Grape seeds, anti-inflammatory, amazing antioxidants. Amazing antioxidants, amazing anti-inflammatory, helps with the vasculature of the body, blood flow, circulation, venous-based, okay? Now, grapefruit seeds, any citrus seed is volatile, meaning like it destroys bacteria, viruses, um, all of those things, pathogens in the body. So when you see citrus extract or um, grapefruit extract, you are thinking uh, it is going to be anti-pathogenic, which is why we use the citricidal, which is from grapefruit seed extract with our CBO protocol. All right, so that's why we use it because we are, and we only use it for three weeks. That's it, maximum three weeks, and we work you up. And it's really, uh, I mean, it's like 18 studies on antifungal and like 20 studies right around there on antibacterial. So very, very impressive. Of course, I'm not giving you any uh, recommendations in terms of medicine, uh, but you know, I'll let you do that. So um, you'll find the citricidal on Equal Life. We don't sell grapeseed extract, and so I would just do one or two servings a day. Um, from your favorite comp company if you want to do grape seed extract as an antioxidant, all right? So hopefully that was helpful. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. You're the best. Much appreciate you. And I'll be back tomorrow with a new week of the Cabral Concept, starting with our Mindset and Motivation Monday. All right, I'll talk to you then. Take care. <laughs>